Muchas gracias, misionero Miguel Bermúdez Marín. Thank you so much, the missionary Miguel Bermúdez Marín. De ahí en Acapulco, Guerrero. In the congregation, our brother, Reverend Abraham Liderato. También a tu esposa Ruth. Y also your wife Ruth. En Acapulco, Guerrero. Who are gathered there in Acapulco, Guerrero. And all those who are through the satellite Amazonas. En esta ocasión tenemos on this occasion we have el tema, el the topic the mystery of godliness Hoy viernes 21 the Friday 21st este año of October of this year 2022 let's read the scripture de primera de Timoteo, capítulo 3, of the first of Timothy chapter 3 verse Verse 16. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. And he wrote there, Referring to verse 15, he wrote, The house of God equals the church. The message, the signs of the end of time, preached on 19th of January 2014 in Cape Rico, tells us, Therefore, in the last day, at the coming of the Lord, what we will be seeing will be everything that we saw in different messengers, different prophets, manifested in the last day. Uh, manifested in the last day at the coming of the Lord, who will come as the line of the tribe of Judah, as king of kings and lord of lords in his, in his claiming work, to give faith to his church to be transformed, and taken with him the marriage supper of the Lamb. In the book of quotations, paragraph, uh, page 52, you may take your seats if you don't mind. Uh, quotations, page 52, paragraph, 449, it says, Father, this little group, I want to meet them there on that great day of the rapture. And then he draws a pyramid, a diagram of a pyramid. <coughs> when we get together, see them come running from nation to nation, getting together. We which are alive and remain shall not hinder them which are asleep. The trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall rise first. And then we will meet them, and then be caught up. And then we will meet them, and they will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And there he writes, the trumpet and the resurrection and the rapture. And below he writes, the rapture. And then he also writes, I will meet you on the island. Uh, he continues saying here, the mystery of the seventh seal is the mystery of the coming of Christ in the last day, in the end time. So therefore, the most important event will be the coming of the Lord. And that is the only hope that the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ has, the second coming of Christ, which will be for the resurrection which of those who come with him resurrected in eternal bodies and for the transformation of those of us who are alive. Therefore, Christ is the only hope for the believers in Christ. And in the message, the second coming of the Lord, on page 15, <clears throat> uh, on page 12 it says brother we the church of the living God in these great hours that we are now living it behooves us 
to check up. Go before God, light the candle of the word of the gospel. Then he writes, candle equals the gospel. He draws a line with an arrow or a star of David and examine ourselves and find out if we are not falling short and especially when we see all these things coming we are at the end time the coming of Christ is at hand there is not another hope in the world for the church And you notice, he writes, the only hope for the church is the coming of Christ. And look, the church is loading. The church has no conscience no more. You can hardly wake them up. The Bible said they would come in that condition when they would say, Lo, our Lord lays his coming, and they would be devouring and biting one another, and so forth, and fighting around. It's just exactly that hour. Everything is ready. The pages is turned as it was like that, and it's ready. The coming of the Lord. And he draws a star of David. For the world, there is no hope. The judgments of the Great Tribulation are what will be manifesting in those last three and a half years of the 70 weeks of the prophet of Daniel. Uh, Therefore, it is important that we understand what time we are living in. When a person goes to a city, he does not know, he has to be attentive to the traffic signs, to the signs that indicate where the city is, and if he follows those signs, he will reach the city. If he does not follow those signs, he will not reach the city he wants to reach, and which he does not know. And if we follow the signs that Christ said would be manifested, we will reach the goal of seeing and receiving Christ in his second coming and receive our transformation and go with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb and go to the divine city, to the city of God in heaven. We have to recognize the signs that direct us to the city of God. Uh, and we have been seeing the signs of the end time which are manifested and the most important of all will be the appearance of a prophet on earth the appearance of the two olive trees the ministries of Moses and Elijah for the Jews and the coming of the Lord for the believers in Christ in the message the invisible union of the bride of Christ the invisible union of the bride of Christ preached on uh, on 25th of November 1965 he tells us Malachi 4 Luke 17.30 St. John 14.12 and Joel 2.38 those promises is just exactly like John the Baptist identified himself in the scripture. Jesus identified himself. What would they say? Away with such a person. John is a, 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 a wild man. The church wasn't able to receive it. That's the pattern. Neither will the church receive it today. But to the erected, God is calling to the erected. They know it. Calling the virtuous bride, the word, the last day church, the elected lady of our Lord Jesus Christ. Word. If Jesus is the word, how many believe that? All right. Then the bride is always part of the bridegroom, so the bride will not be a denomination. It will have to be the word manifested to be the bride of Christ. 
He writes, promised, made real, made reality fulfilled. He promised to do it. He said how he did. And draws a pyramid and the edges. Never uses or loses his pattern. He always did it by the pattern. The pattern. And Dr. William writes there the pattern. He done it every time by the pattern. He does it again calling out his virtuous bride. In the last day, the lovely Rebecca waiting for her Isaac. And he makes an arrow from the bottom of Isaac and writes, Jesus Christ with Moses and Elijah, the promised son, Christ. Isaac equals Christ. Jesus Christ with Moses and Elijah. There is the coming of the Son of Man with his angels. He continues saying on page 2 of the Bible said, he says, Therefore, let us watch for the signs of the end time, so that when the seventh seal is opened for the church, and the seventh seal is opened for the Jews, and the sixth seal is opened for the Jews, which the sixth seal is the same as the seventh seal for the church, the sixth seal for the Jews is or are the two olive trees, the ministries of Moses and Elijah, repeating themselves in the end time. And that, I always say, he always told me, you have to know well that mystery of the seventh seal, which is the coming of the Lord for the church and the sixth seal for the Jews. He always repeated that to me. You have to know that mystery well so that you can perform in that mystery. Notice, after the opening of the seventh seal, we find an earthquake. And also, with the opening of the sixth seal, and also he always told us, and he told me, you have to identify yourselves in the scriptures to know who you are in the scriptures. In Daniel, we see ourselves there, see things up to the end. And in that scripture, over there it says, the way shall understand. Already there, we are, we are identifying ourselves. You notice, even in the Old Testament, no, but we belong to the New Testament. But you notice, there we come, we, we come from there. We come from when the universe was not even made, was not even created. We come from the great theophany of God. But we see ourselves in the scriptures, and we identify ourselves as the wise who would understand the mysteries of God pertaining to this end time. In the New Testament, we also identify ourselves with uh, countless scriptures as, for instance, that of First Corinthians 15, verse 49 onwards, that we shall hear the final trumpet, and that if we remain alive, we shall be changed. There is another promise in another scripture with which we identify ourselves. Also Romans 8, the creation is groaning waiting for the revealing of the sons of God, which are the sons of God, who will be adopted, us. So it's a series of scriptures that one identified, identifies himself with. You notice after the opening of the seventh seal, we find an earthquake. And also, with the opening of the sixth seal, we find an earthquake. Will it be the same earthquake or will it be two earthquakes? That will be seen according to Revelation 11 verses 1 to 19. Therefore, for the resurrection of the dead in Christ, there will be an earthquake. And that is at the coming of the Lord. On page 24, uh, in the message, look unto Jesus.
He says in paragraph 188, you are a told, a total stranger. Now, if I went and put hands on you and said, sister, you are going to get well, you could believe that, and that would be all right. But now, what, what if he comes? See, that was the days gone back, back in the Pentecostal days. We are living ahead of that now. We are beyond Pentecostal, the same as we are Methodist and Lutheran. We are way on up the coming of the Lord where the ministry that Jesus Christ exercised himself has to be exactly like the headstone on the pyramid has to be so haunted every stone fits perfectly. And the church has got to get in that condition to receive the headstone. Then take the whole thing in the resurrection when the body is raised up. And he draws the pyramid and the edges and he writes the cornerstone and his coming and the resurrection. He continues saying, on page 2 of the Bible study, first we have to see the signs that indicate that we are in the time of the end. In Luke 21, Christ said that when we see these things happening, let us lift up our heads, because our redemption is nigh. In other words, our transformation which is the redemption of the body, where we will obtain the eternal body, glorified body, that will be the redemption of the body. We have already been seeing for some time the signs that indicate the end time. Therefore, let us be prepared for what is coming from the behalf of God, the blessing that comes for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, before the Great Tribulation begins. We are not going to go through the Great Tribulation. We will be transformed uh, to receive the Lord in the air and to always be with Him and to go with Him to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Therefore, comfort one another in these words. We know that we go through difficult stages here on earth, but they are words of comfort to know that at the coming of the Lord, the dead believers in Him will be resurrected in eternal bodies, and we who are living will be transformed. We shall be taken with Christ the marriage of the Lamb. Therefore, we have to be teaching the Word, the Word of God promised for this time, to mature as wheat, to be transformed and taken with Christ to the marriage of the Ram. On page 1, uh, let me see, there is a man that can turn on the light. On page 24, on page 29 in the English book, it says, down there, yesterday's Ruther, Ruther's manna would not work for Methodist. Methodist manna would not work for Pente Pentecost. Pentecost manna will not work for today. See what I mean? Every day it comes, day by day, fresh, and so has it through the church ages. Luther's manner was the message of justification, which his message was the manifestation of sanctification. Pentecostal was the restoration of the gifts, but this is introducing the headstone, the last day, the bride tree, which is contrary to all of it. And yet, it is the same light for the matured. As, like the same sun, shine today will be ripening the grain for the harvest in July. See what I mean? But the light today won't do any good back there, back there in July. It's stronger. The wheat is more advanced. It is ready to take it. Amen.
Amen. Certainly is. They couldn't take it now. It can't then. The season wasn't right. Then it is now. You can't go against God's nature. He has got a law, and to contrary and to contrary that law kills your plant. You have got to go according to God's spoken laws, and His laws is His word. Any law is a word spoken, and a word is a thought manifested. And he writes, the harvest, he would send his angels, and his angels are Moses and Elijah. And he writes, he sends, will send his angels. And he also writes, that is the spoken word. The divine law is the spoken word. And he continues saying, in the message of reverential fear, preached on 26th of January 2014, uh, therefore seeing uh, this being God's way of speaking to his people, let us stand firm, listening to the voice of Christ, the voice of God in and from his holy mountain, his spiritual temple, his church. He will not speak in and from another place. That is why the messenger for every age has always been part of the mystical body of Christ under the new covenant. And thus it was with Moses. Moses was with his people and he went to Sinai. And thus each messenger will rise in the age he is called to live in. He goes up to the Mount of God, to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ which is the holy mountain because it has been sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the message, the evening messenger he tells us on page on page 17 in the English book he says, we have had plenty of dismal time, but there shall come light. The same sun that came and changed the dispensation then comes again. That's going to be from earth to glory. We will go in that. And he writes, uh, the sun himself makes the change of dispensation. We will go in that. That will be from earth to glory. One time we, Dr. William writes one, went in. The other time, two, we, we went out. And this time, three, we are going up. And, he, and all right, I see, all right. He writes one, edges, two, uh, then two out he puts with Elijah and then up three he writes with Moses and Elijah we are coming to the end time and we are not only coming we have already arrived we are at the end time what does God find in this end time? God finds in this end time just exactly what he found in other end times. And belief, he has always been that. He, when he comes, he finds an belief. He finds that the program that he laid down to the people uh, back there in Noah's time, if they would uh, live after his ordinances, offered the sacrifices, they got away from it. When he came, he found this, that things were operating wrong. The same thing he did when he came on earth. He found the people and the Pharisees and so forth after the law. What was they doing? Just no sincerity in it, in it at all. Just go ahead and, and slope it through 
any old way. And just as long as they joined the church, and that's all they needed. And that's what he found. And that's what he found again. He finds the same thing. People doesn't change. So if he sent his program, and the people disbelieved it there, and they perished, they believed it, and they lived. Now on those two, it's got to be the same on this time. It's got to be the same. Uh, it's always been a fight for the messenger separate the old from the new. It's always been that fight for the messenger coming in to separate old from new. Though always the message must be scripture. Uh, that angel that was showing Brother Branham what was going to what was going on there in the tent vision. And Brother Branham was asking, why in there? Do you notice, what did the angel tell him? He said, doesn't the scripture say, uh, see, everything that is happening under the third pole ministry is scripture. Because the angel, who is the one, who is the pillar of fire, who is the, uh, is the word, therefore everything that is being spoken is scripture. Therefore it will do all that for which it is being spoken. It will produce everything that it has to produce by means of that spoken word. And what is it that it is going to produce? Uh, that has been spoken to us is what is going to be fulfilled. And that is the fulfillment of the tenth vision, the rapturing faith, where that is where we are going to get the rapture. Because that is the, the fulfillment, the final fulfillment of God in the vision of the Great Tent Cathedral. Otherwise, he would not fulfill the tent vision. Because it would have to, it would have no purpose. The purpose is to take us out of this earth to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, which is already ready. Uh, that supper is ready, is ready for us. And he writes there. Changing from one dispensation to another is a hard part. Is the hard part. Now let's take for instance Jesus. How hard it was. Him to come in and change the message from the law to grace. Yet the Bible said it would come that day. There would come a Messiah. Remember that Messiah is anointed one. And a daily sacrifice would be taken away. And we know it was prophesied through the prophets. What a great thing it was for him to do that. But we find that he did it. And the one we put some points. He did it because the scripture says, and the believers of that day, so called believers, in brackets, absolutely would not agree with him. He continues saying, on page 3 below, he says, All manifestation of God. From the day of Pentecost until now has been in the holy mountain in the holy mountain, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is covered with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the manifestation of God before the rapture and before the beginning of the great tribulation will be in, on the mount of God, the temple of God, which is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, because the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the spiritual temple, which represents the heavenly temple of God. Therefore, with reverential fear, let us listen to the voice of God in our time. And then he puts, with reverential fear, that is why Brother Branham said in the book of the Seals that he had a reverential fear in that very important stage of the opening of the seventh seal. And also, in heaven, when that mystery was opened, he says that they were all held by a reverential fear. When that seventh seal was opened, 
And if in heaven they were dominated by or overwhelmed by that reverential fear, when the seventh seal was being opened, opened to the public in the fulfillment of the tenth vision, also that reverential fear will overwhelm the elect of God. Let us know that it is there where he will speak as the lion of the tribe of Judah and the seven thunders will utter their voices. And that voice will be the content of that open little book. When someone comes with a book or something written, it is to make it known to the public. And Christ comes with a little book open in his hand, the Lamb's Book of Life. And he says to the Apostle St. John, who was also a prophet, and is a prophet because he is alive in paradise, take the little book, as ask the little book to the angel who is, asking, who is standing on the sea and on the earth. And he asks him and says, and eat it, a book that can be eaten, the word of the Lord, because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. In the message, uh, God's power to transform. He tells us on page 34, um, on page 24 in the English book Uh, you notice here in a little bit of it in order not to read much I think we have already read it but let's read it again on page 24 in the English book he says let me tell you about you Arizonians here. You see that analysis the other day of schools, didn't you? Eighty percent of the children in Arizona in Arizona schools are suffering with mental deficiency. And sixty seven percent of them meaning out of eighty percent now seventy sixty seven percent of those eighty percent was by looking at television. I don't know if we had read it, but I, I had it there. He writes, mental deficiency from watching television. Uh, in other words, all those programs and all that. What, what they say there from that report which they made that 77% you can imagine of the children suffer from mental deficiency. There are a lot here of extracts referring to that, but this will be another topic. But I wanted to read something there. We already have something there. Another time we can read more. <coughs> that does not mean we should not have televisions in the houses, because there we transmit the message and we also play hymns and all that. And we also keep up date with the events that are happening in the world because we also have to be aware of, of the news of what is happening in other words we have to be realistic but also know all these things because they are also they talk about programs and movies with monsters and things like that and many things in many times such things are not convenient for the children for young people sometimes from an early age so that they can be quiet they sit them and put them in front of the television so that they don't disturb while their parents are doing the housework and they sit them there and when they come to see maybe the child is watching something that not even the parents know they are watching that and the parent is responsible for that because 
That is what they are getting in their ears, through their eyes. And all of that is what uh, those are things they learn from the television. And they are also scolding them. And the poor boy is not to blame. The one to, to blame, the, the one who put him on the television is the one to blame. And those are the parents. And they are hitting him and then giving him, you boy, why do you do that? But you put him in front of a television. All this helps us to be more attentive to our children and to take advantage of all this technology we have for the work of God. Because remember that all this is an instrument that the enemy of God is using to pervert the divine program and also to attack the work of God. In other words, all that, if one uses it for a blessing, for the work of God, it is a blessing, but it also makes much harm if you use it to attack the work. Or, for example, uh, that of children does not help them in growth. Uh, the education the ch uh, of the children if they put programs and things that are not according to the divine program instead of television being a blessing it becomes a great problem for the home let's go to page 20, 25 which is where we are going to read from it says and I thought what a pity what a shame it is so how under the name of religion they act there uh, they act like there is no God someone said the other day uh, to a boy that goes with my daughter a Christian boy said give it a smart remark about Adam and Eve said Eve going through the garden said children you see that tree there said that's where your mother eat, eat us out of house and home. Could you imagine, supposed to be a staunch Christian, that would take a promise in the word of God and throw it off to a hog pen? They act like they don't have they don't have to come to judgment. But God will bring every secret into judgment. They act like there is no God. And he writes, the secrets of the heart, judgment. Uh, for all this, we will give an account. Do not think that God does not know what we think and what we talk about in secret. We will give an account for, for everything. I don't want to call them a fool, because the Bible said the fool is not right. Jesus said it, it isn't. Don't call no man a fool. But in Psalms, 14.1, the fool said in his heart, there is no God. See? They, they are not. I don't want to call them fools, but they act like they are. They act like it. So you see where we are at today. Like, there is no God. I belong to church. And they, and, and they all, the whole thing, the Bible is a big joke. Our church knows where they are going. Yeah, right straight to hell, exactly, right on their road, right down through science and education, theology, theological seminaries and things, just breezing, breezing them right down the road. The Holy Spirit doesn't have a chance to give a revelation or nothing. The seminary has done got it cut out. The Holy Spirit is to lead us. And then he writes, the Holy Spirit is our leader. Not a seminary, not bishops and overseers and so forth. The Holy Ghost is our leader. And he writes, always working through a messenger. And he draws a picture of a pyramid and the edges. Cain was such a person as that. He was very religious, indeed. Now, if religion is all that you have to have, then God was unjust by condemning Cain. Because he was religious. He was as religious and sincere as Abel was. Now, remember, he thought of God. He worshipped God, he had a church, he built an, an altar, 
He made a sacrifice. He prayed. He worshipped. But he was rejected. No matter how. Esau was also, see? Religion, see? That is Satan's business. Not to kill the whole thing, but just contaminate it. That's all. He ain't going to kill the whole thing. Oh, not communists. No, no. The Antichrist is, the, is not communism. The Bible says it would deceive the erected if it was possible. Don't notice the iron curtain, but the purple one. And he writes, Communism, iron curtain, iron curtain, Roman Catholic Church, purple curtain. <clears throat> but notice, Cain came to worship, but he had the wrong seed in him. Dr. William writes, animal spirit of the devil, serpent seed. And then he writes, Cain's seed of the serpent. The hiss of the serpent had hissed over him, for he was the seed of the woman. He knew the perfect will of God, but he refused to do it. Did you know that? Satan knows the will of God, but he refuses to do it. Notice he had seen God vindicate Abel's message. Now, I want you to think, use your thinking man's filter now for a minute. Abel's correct message that God vindicated to be the truth. Are you drawing now? Aha! Abel's message had been received, and Cain saw it and knew that God had vindicated. Dr. William writes, confirmed or vindicated. That message right, but he, he just couldn't do, his, do it. His pride kept him from it. Ah, did you see? He knew that God had vindicated, confirmed Abel's message, but his pride turned him away from him. That's right. His pride, the William writes, pride kept him from doing it. He seen God vindicate the message. So it seems to be now so hard for the people to humble themselves to the word of God. They, they just don't want to do it. They will humble themselves to creed of the church. Dr. William writes creed. Sure, but not to the word. Not the word of God. But not to the word of God. He continues saying on page 4, just as we go to school and university and we are given the teaching of the content written in different books and in spiritual terms, we eat all that teaching. We eat all the content that is in those books and then come the exams at the corresponding time. And this time, that exam will come, and we shall see who will pass that exam. Now we are in the revision, in the teaching for that exam. And that, uh, in the message of the Invisible Union of the Bride of Christ, and that exam, when the tutor comes to give it, who are the ones who will pass it with the perfect or excellence, the erect, the bride church, the one that is maturing, the one that is ready to leave this earth, the one at that moment when the tutor comes, to give that exam, they will be ready, prepared to live, because they were in the teaching, in the revision. There are things in the revision which are not in the course which, uh, which is taken. Those who have studied know about that. And when they take the exam, they say, hey, that did not come out in the year I took, but it did come out in the revision. 
like the mystery of the coming of the son of man with his angels the mystery of the seventh seal where is it going to be made known and where is it being opened in the teaching in the revision that did not come out before no because he said such and such and here there is It's like this, like Porque this and like this. Well, that is exactly not the way it is because the knowledge of that would be given in the fulfillment of the tenth vision. Dice que de mm. manera, y no he who says it, who, he who says that it's in a certain way and does not listen to the teaching, well, you know what? That is exactly not the way it is. The way he is thinking, that is not the way it is because that is happening now. That mystery is being made known. Uh, what the thunders are speaking in that teaching is coming out, which is the revelation of the mystery of the second coming of the Lord, the mystery of the coming of the Son of Man with His angels. You notice here on page 30 of this message, the invisible union of the bride of Christ, it says, You let the Holy Spirit he is the prophet of the day let him come into your heart right now and examine with the word of God and the doubts about the message will be all dissolved he dissolves all the doubts you find out it's exactly on the word for this day you cannot preach Luther's message today it goes in it but that's the fit aha, aha cannot preach wizardry, cannot preach Pentecostal. We are plumb beyond that. They denominated and died. They are the stock. The stock come up with the bread. That's the first condition of the church. Now, that there don't look like the first grain that went in the ground, the wheat. The second come forth is a pollen that still don't look like the grain. Looks more like it It's coming more in the image of the real grain, but the blades don't chua, look like the grain that went in the ground. It's a, a carrier of life that was in the grain. But what did it do? It denominated. Just like all other nature fits in with it, it died. Then what the life ran right up. For the spiritual temple of Christ is growing. It is ever increasing until the day is perfect. That new dispensational day, a new dispensation, right up into the tassel. It's got whole lots of little, little boards hanging on it. Looks like little grains in it. Looks like it's real grain, but it isn't. Then it drops down the shark. And what does it bring forth? a shark now you take a grain of wheat then the wheat is fast coming forth and Jesus said a corn of wheat and you take that wheat and open it up you pull it off the stalk you look at it you say you got a grain of wheat be careful it's just exactly like the grain but there is not a bit of grain in it it's the shark there is the Pentecostals so much as Matthew 24, 24 said deceive the very elected in the last days if it was possible but you pull leaf by leaf back you ain't got no grain the grain is right back in the back of it and then the life comes out of that denomination goes into the grain then what happens when the grain begins to grow and to get bigger so it can cover over something the denomination pulls away from it why ain't we got a denomination out of this they never will be It's the grain. It can't go no further. We are at the end time. So what does it have to do now? Lay in the presence of the sun to be ripened. That's exact. The word to be ripened into your heart to bring forth and live what we are talking about. Every person, every grain of wheat is going to produce 
what every person will be receiving. Y escribe la palabra, tiene que madurar en tu and corazón. he writes, the word has to mature in your heart. Sí, señor. Entonces, yes, no sir. Más dudas. Then you will have no si more doubt. If you let the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. Like the queen said about Daniel. You may say, what is this all got to do with the thanksgiving? What are you talking about, Brother Branham? Here yeah, it is, quarter to nine. You didn't say nothing about thanksgiving. What a message for the occasion to me? Yes, indeed. The pilgrim fathers were very thankful for their newfound way of life, being separated from the old English denominations and creed. They could marry to the new anointed word for their age. That's right, the new anointed word for their age, for their day. It writes, the new earth is the seals. Y also writes, marry the word for the edge. Sigue diciendo, so what is saying, on page 4, Brother William says, according to what you ate, what you learned in the spiritual terms, is that later you are going to act. See, what we are reading with what you learned, is that that is the way you will act. Or as an engineer, as a lawyer, as a doctor, or an advocate, whatever it may be. Therefore, that is what we will talk about to your clients, to your patients. And there are so many things we could say. So it is also with this little book that Christ, the mighty angel coming down from heaven, takes in heaven, which was closed. He opened it in heaven and then brings it open to the earth and gives it to a man who is represented in John the Apostle. And as John ate it, so shall the man eat it. The last messenger that God will have in his church the last day and will have the order to prophesy over many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. And in Revelation 11, verse 1 to 14, we find there the ministry that prophesies over many peoples, nations, and tongues, which is the ministry of the two olive trees, the ministry of Moses and Elijah repeating in the last day, everything will be simple. Therefore, the ministry of Moses and Elijah to the Jews will bring them the divine revelation that is theirs to receive on the last day. And the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will receive the revelation of the coming of the Lord, which will give them the faith to be transformed believers in Christ and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb. There is a part here in the book of quotations on page it's on page 5 paragraph 29 then the Lord returns with the bride and Israel sees her and oh, what a time that will be. And he writes, Israel sees the Lord with his bride.